Hello, everyone. My name is Evan Freiberger, and we got a little bit of things to talk about. Unfortunately, Mother Nature does not know what it means to take a break. Obviously, you can say that, uh, or at least make the argument that Mother Nature is a workaholic, and we are all sick and tired of her, and she needs to leave our country alone. But I will say there is a little bit of good news. Tomorrow isn't looking super dangerous yet, but there is going to be a chance for some large and maybe even some large to very large hail, damaging winds, and maybe a small tornado threat. Also, Going into the next day, we have yet another area of severe weather to watch out for on the East Coast. So let's go ahead and break it right down for you guys and let you know what is possible with this little storm that's coming in and then what is going to be happening to the United States in terms of weather after that. But before we get started, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and share the stream if you feel it's prudent to do so. And let's go ahead and jump right into it. So first off, starting with tomorrow, as you guys can see, we do have a slight risk out there that's mainly going to be in the southeast in the Tennessee Valley. We're talking about areas like Atlanta, Birmingham, Huntsville, Nashville, Jackson, Memphis, over there near Pine Bluff and Little Rock as well. Our tornado threat, at least for now, is at a 2%, and I think it's going to stay around there. There really isn't going to be a whole lot of spin in the atmosphere this day, so I really think we're we're going to primarily see some large to very large hail out of these storms, but you can see Nashville, Huntsville, Jackson, Memphis over there into northeastern Arkansas are going to be in a small tornado threat. Again, a 2% means a 2% chance of seeing tornadoes within a 25 mile radius of you. Coming over to our winds, as you guys can see, we do have a 15% chance for some 60 mile per hour winds and above. That's going to be in the yellow there and then in the brown a little bit further up to the north into the Ohio Valley in the Midwest. You can see that we also have a 5% chance for that further up to the north now coming back down uh, to the south again to focus in on our 15 percent chance for quarter sized hail and above is going to be possible over there near nashville huntsville jackson memphis little rock pine bluff and then we also have a five percent around that now hopping over to our future radar here this is the h triple r you can see that some rain is going to be moving into the ohio valley and michigan as we go into tonight and that is our low pressure system that is eventually going to kind of come into the united states and as there Early as 6 a.m. tomorrow, we could have some thunderstorms ongoing uh, over there in Kentucky, but we're not expecting those to be overly severe. And then as we move further into the future by around 1 p.m., that line of storms kind of moves into parts of Virginia and North Carolina. Then back over here, we have a little bit of a jet stream, a lot that's going to be pushing a lot of our forcing that is coming out of this region into kind of this area uh, of, of the United States. So we have kind of a high pressure back over here to our west, and that is going to be spinning that air around and kind of forcing a little bit of that storm activity down here into the Tennessee Valley, which you can see as of right here, we got that little bit of a upper level jet moving into this area at around this time with the speed max over here near Lincoln and Topeka that will eject into the area right around when the storms start to fire. We got a little bit of a parting of the seas here in our upper levels, adding to a little bit of forcing, which will help get these storms started. You can see we have a little bit of a trough over here as well. Coming down over to our 850 millibar winds, you can see they are pretty weak. We're talking about 20 to 25 knots, maybe some isolated spots of 30 knots as that comes through the area. So the tornado risk is expected to be pretty low. But when you have lower, lower level winds, typically what that means, and let's come over here to a blank canvas. So essentially, say this is your updraft. Maybe it's got a little bit of rotation in there as it rises up to the top portion of the atmosphere. When there's a lot of lower level winds, which are kind of in the lower portion of the atmosphere, atmosphere, but not all the way down to the surface. Let's say this is a piece of moisture. It comes up into here, say our freezing level is right here, and then that continues to rise, tries to build into some hail. But if there's strong lower level winds, a lot of the times what happens is that hail that forms gets slung out of the updraft. But if you have weaker lower level winds, not really pushing those hailstones out, what you can tend to get is hailstones that last in the updraft a little bit longer than they would. And the lower the freezing level which will be pretty low closer to the surface the longer the time that that moisture is going to stay in the updraft and form into bigger hail so hail is definitely going to be an issue on this day because of our lower level shear and also our temperatures aloft if you look at the 700 millibar here you can see that we're already approaching you know 26 degrees fahrenheit just above our heads and a little bit further higher than that it's going to be pretty darn cold up there adding to some decent lapse rates i mean our updrafts are going to be able to form pretty quick 
quickly and definitely be a little bit on the stronger side rather than weaker. So as I continue to push this forward, as we move into around 3 to 4 p.m., you can see that we start to see some bigger storms start to fire at around 5 p.m. over here into northern Georgia, central Alabama. And then as I continue to push this forward, you can see we get multiple storms out here that are going to have that potential uh, for some large to very large hail. It seems like our latest HRRR kind of keeps that hail threat a little bit further to the south and east, but we do have to keep an eye on these storms back over here as well as they will have that potential uh, to drop some large hail now they're not really calling for very large hail just yet but i've have some looked at some of the soundings in this area and it seems like the environment could support it so it wouldn't overly surprise me if we get a hatched hail risk uh, by tonight or tomorrow morning unless the forecast changes a little bit but bottom line is is that the main threat with this is going to be hail and damaging winds with a lower threat uh, for tornadoes due to the fact that our lower level shear is pretty weak now continuing to push this forward around 8 p.m we could have some cells back over here into mississippi and alabama Alabama, also over here south of Atlanta near Augusta, and maybe some of these storms could be stronger than what is forecasted here. So we got to keep an eye on those at around this time frame at around the Nashville and Huntsville area there in Alabama and Tennessee. And then as I continue to push this forward, you can see that we still have some storms kind of firing south of Atlanta near Montgomery by around 11 p.m. And these storms are going to continue pretty much until about 2 a.m. before they start to fizzle out. And this storm charts uh, starts uh, to recharge for the next day, which brings us over here to our day three risk. As of right now, we're talking a marginal risk. There is definitely a little bit of model disagreement. The NAM is a little bit more bullish on maybe a little bit of a higher probability for tornadoes and the HRR. Uh, we'll go look at that in just a little bit. We'll kind of compare and contrast the models here. But overall, severe weather will be possible out here towards Fayetteville, Wilmington, Jacksonville, Greenville, Virginia Beach. I think this is mainly going to be a damaging wind threat, maybe some hail and also a small chance for tornadoes. But it's definitely not going to be anything as bad as we have seen as of recently unless the NAM is correct. And we'll go check out those differences of opinion there. The NAM is a little bullish here. But but overall, if you live in these areas, just be weather aware. And let's gonna go hop over to our latest models. Here's where we left off on the HRRR. And as you can see, uh, the, a lot of rain is gonna kind of spread through this area as we go into day three. And then eventually at about 1 p.m., you can see that we are starting to see a reinvigoration uh, of our convection. If we come over here uh, to our surface base cape, you can see we're kind of on the line here of around four to 600 joules per kilogram that's not going to really be a whole lot to sustain severe weather so it's definitely a little bit on the lower side of things if we come over here to the 500 millibar jet you can see though that we do have a little area kind of streaking across this area so we definitely are going to have some capability uh for some forcing to cause some you know storms to mature out there and then also but look at this the h triple r really doesn't have a whole lot of lower level shear out here maybe about 25 to 20 knots that might increase throughout the day or it could increase out over the ocean and that's not going to really cause much of a tornado threat so it kind of looks like we're going to be looking at another potential hail event out here and then maybe uh you know some damaging winds but overall at least the h triple r is saying this is going to be kind of a weaker uh severe weather event now coming over to our nam 3k model this is where we have some differences of opinions uh kind of going into uh, the 11th as you can see the storm kind of ejects in the area we definitely get a lot more uh, of convection start to fire up over there near south carolina and fayetteville as we move into around 1 p.m. Coming over to our 850 millibar winds, as you can see, we it's definitely a lot stronger than in comparison to the HRR. We're talking anywhere from, you know, 30 to 40, maybe even 45 knots a shear, which will be plenty enough to support, um, you know, a tornado threat and perhaps a, a robust tornado threat uh, there within that line. As long as we have some instability in the picture, which, as you can see, the NAM is also a lot more bullish on that. So pretty much two completely different pictures here from both our NAM and our HRR. So we still got to work these details out but i wouldn't completely rule out maybe a slightly elevated tornado threat for the eastern portion of the united states mainly over there into south carolina and north carolina as we move into about the 11th here uh, at 1 p.m in april coming over to the gfs and hopping over to our 500 millibar winds in order to kind of get an understanding of what the weather is going to be doing after this fact if i continue to push this forward you can see that uh, you know this general troughing over there on the 10th and then the 11th and then that kind of moves out and now look at this 
we have quite the high pressure system moving in and it's basically an omega block which essentially means we got a high pressure system over here a low pressure system over there and a low pressure system over there and that is going to continue to keep the united states relatively quiet until this high pressure system kind of moves out and as you can see it kind of hangs around for a little bit maybe you have to watch over here near like uh nebraska and going into iowa as we move into the 14th let's just check out the uh, surface base cape yeah not a whole lot of instability up there but if we get a little bit more than what is forecasted here this might have to be you know uh, uh, watched a little bit for a severe weather threat but we are pretty far away from it but it's just something to keep an eye on it's kind of removed from the main uh, ejection portion of this trough but uh, and the trough seems rather positively tilted there uh, so it might not be on the higher end of events there but maybe another little shot of severe weather up there into the Nebraska and Iowa area and then you know that's going to be mainly the, the main area that I'm keeping an eye on for at least the short term and then that kind of moves out through the northern United States maybe brings another trough further down to the south as we move into the 15th have to keep an eye on our instabilities you can see it's kind of weak here so it looks like uh, instability is going to be a problem for any storm that can kind of work its way into this area kind of keeping that severe weather threat relatively low uh, as we move into the 15th but coming over to our temperatures here you can see the United States was pretty crispy today sitting at around to 60 degrees you know just kind of in that that realm of temperatures that feels pretty nice you know we're definitely not into that intense heat uh as of late and because we have this little trough that's going to be moving in it's going to stay relatively cooler over the next couple of days into the southeast especially into the nighttime but that should mainly recover um you know at least for the gulf states out there in the southeast but look at this all the way from texas into canada we're going to be talking about 60 degree temperatures uh through wyoming going into montana north and south dakota definitely a little bit anomalously hot up there uh, as temperatures hold in the 78 and 80s there into central and southern texas pretty toasty over there into parts of arizona in southeastern California as we got some 90 degree temperatures trying to work their way near the Phoenix area but generally you can see that over the next couple of days it is going to remain quite cool uh, in the Ohio Valley the Great Lakes and the Northeast as that little trough comes through and allows that cold air to kind of push in but as we move into the 13th you can see that we start to get a little bit of a resurgence of our warmth with ninth right it's widespread 90s out over here in Texas going into Oklahoma maybe some isolated spots out there uh, of 100 degree temperatures and then over here in the southeast, you can see that we're starting to see a little bit of a warm up as that high pressure system moves off to the east. By the time we get into the 14th, we could see our first kind of widespread 80 degree day uh, out here across the southeast going into the Tennessee Valley and the east coast. And also, maybe some 90s creeping back up in there for Florida. 90s hanging around the coast there just to the north of Houston going into the te te Texas and Mexico border and a little bit of some 90s back over here with those warm temperatures still hanging on surprisingly far north. I mean, and look at this we have 50 degree temperatures making it almost all the way up into northern canada so kind of uh, a pretty anomalous uh, amount of heat up there that is for sure for this time of year now continuing to push this forward you can see that after our that next little trough comes in we're going to have that's going to open the doors for a little bit more cooler temperatures while they recover during the day and that's going to kind of generally be the pattern here for a decent amount of april we're going to have some warmer temperatures build in but they're not going to stick around forever unless you live over there near texas and phoenix or Arizona, or it's going to be cooler and hotter for most of the country as we get these different troughs to come in. But thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll be watching tomorrow. If we need to go live, I will.